So the next talk will be by Nicolo, and uh, he will talk about mediator approach to mechanic design with limited commitment. Okay, so thanks a lot, and this is joint work with uh, Tahuro, and we are both uh, at uh, TSC. So let me begin with a classic example of mechanics design with limited commitment, which is durable good monopoly. Time is discrete, the time horizon is infinite, there is a seller who owns an asset valued at zero, and the buyer that has a valuation theta, which can be the low I for the asset, and the low valuation is uh, strictly positive. There is a non-trivial common prior, and players share a common discount fa factor uh, delta. In each period T, the seller makes a price offer PT to the buyer. The buyer can accept or reject. If the buyer accepts, the game ends with payoffs with the obvious one, PT for the, for the seller, and the valuations minus the price for the buyer. If the buyer rejects, players move to the next period. And the seller com can commit to the price offer for the period, but cannot commit to the price offers in the future periods. There is lack of commitment on the seller side. What do we know about this game? That by sequential rationality, which reflects limited commitment, prices decrease over time. And as delta goes to one, we have the formalization of the host conjecture, which means that the seller payoffs converges to the lowest buyer valuation. The buyers pay off then, so basically the buyers earns all the trade surplus except uh, minus the, the lowest va valuation, and the, the, the trading outcome is efficient. However, one may want to ask to what extent the host conjecture depends on the details of the game form. Does, does this work or, or okay, okay, yeah, thanks. And you can address uh, this question at least from two points of view. First, the first one is the one of contract design. Of course, these two points are uh, interconnected. So what if the seller can use, offer more sophisticated selling contracts instead of simply posting prices? And the other one is the information design viewpoint. So what are the equilibrium outcomes under all possible information structures? And the recent literature that has shown that uh, the information structure plays a crucial role in the predictions of mechanism design problems with limited commitment. However, existing work has typically focused on alternative but specific informational assumption. So the question we want to address is what are the equilibrium outcomes under all possible information structures in mechanism design problems with limited commitment? And what we have is that a systematic study of this question is missing and so is a method to address that, this question. So our first contribution is indeed to provide an approach to study contract and information design in mechanism design problems with limited commitment. And our second contribution is to use our approach to characterize the seller optimal mechanism in the durable good monopoly application. So let me now formalize the model which describes the mediator approach to mechanism design with limited commitment and then I'll, I'll go to the durable good monopoly application. I will apply that to the durable good monopoly application. There are three players, a principal, an agent, and a mediator. Time is discrete, denoted by T, and the horizon can be either finite or infinite. The agent has a perfectly persistent private information theta, distributed according to some common prior mu. Each period, an allocation is determined, and we denote by A the realized sequence of allocations. And the, the player's payoff depends on the agent's private information and on the realized sequence of allocations. And the mediator, the, the thing to note is that the mediator preferences are a constant function, that is to say that the mediator is indifferent about allocations and types, and therefore can commit to any strategy in the game. Each period, the, the principal offers a spot contract to the agent, which consists of two elements. The first one, MT, is a set of input messages, and the second one, alpha T, is an allocation rule mapping input messages into randomization over allocations for the period. What about timing and observability? Let's consider first period zero. Zero, 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 zero the agent privately observes Air type and then send. Doesn't work. 
oh, oh, yes. So, and then sends a private report uh, R to the mediator. Then in each period T, larger or equal than one, the mediator sends a private signal to the principal. The principal offers a spot contract to the agent, and this is publicly observed. Then the mediator sends a, a private signal to the agent. After that, the agent sends an input message to the contract, and this is observed by the mediator, but not by the principal. And finally, an allocation is drawn from the allocation rule, given the, the input message of the, of the agent. The solution concept is weak, perfect Bayesian equilibrium. And so why do we take this approach? Basically, this approach consists in applying the notion of communication equilibrium due to Forge, Meyerson, and more recently, Sugaya Volitsky, to mechanize design problems with limited commitment. That is to say that we consider a fictitious mediator that designs the entire communication protocol or information structure of the game, and this allows to reinterpret the model as one of mechanism designed by a mediator which has commitment power. And why do we do that? Why do we think this is the, the right way to think about uh, information structures in mechanism design problems with limited commitment? Because we know from the revelation principle in the literature from in uh, Forge, Myerson, Sugaya, Volisky that uh, whenever, an equilibrium out, whenever there is an equilibrium outcome of the game, given any information structure, then this can be replicated as an equilibrium outcome of the mediated game with the canonical information structure. What is the canonical information structure? This is the information structure in which the mediator privately asks players for private information and then recommends player actions in each period and players are truthful and obedient. What we do in the paper, not in today's talk because of time, we construct three examples to clarify, three simple examples to clarify why it is important to consider all information structure. Indeed, in these examples, we show that new equilibrium outcomes can arise once all information structures are considered, and these equilibrium outcomes are, let's say, overlooked by, by earlier work. So now let me operationalize our approach to the, mm, in the dura go good uh, monopoly setting. So now let's suppose that we were to apply naively the revelation principle in Forge, Meyerson, Sugaya, Volitsky. Among other things, this would require the following. Each period, the mediator would have to recommend a contract to the seller, and then we would have to satisfy seller's obedience. This, that is to say that the recommended, contract, the recommended contract must be at least as good as any other contract from the seller's viewpoint. However, the space of contracts in this game is very large, and therefore it is hard to identify what are the on-path contracts that are, are offered by the seller in any equilibrium, and also to verify, to check for all possible obedience constraints. Therefore, to solve for the seller optimal outcome in this game, we develop an indirect approach, which consists in three, of three steps. The first step is an outcome-based approach, that consists of representing any outcome of the game by a sequence of trade probabilities and expected transfers. So any outcome can be denoted as XP, where X denotes the two, the two probability which, which, with which the two types trade with the seller in period T, and the PTs are the expected transfers from the two types to the seller in each period T. And here, clearly, the space of, uh, of allocations is a much simpler mathematical object than the set of all contracts. And therefore, we rethink or we can reinterpret the mediator strategy as one of directly recommending allocations to the players instead of contracts periods by periods. In the second step, we construct an upper bound problem that is we ignore all the seller's obedience constraints and we focus only on one obedience constraint. And this obedience constraint is the one in which the seller offers a price equal to the low valuation buyer type. And whenever this happens, we know that in any weak, weak PBE, on path and off path, both types would accept such a price and the game would end. So given these two, these two steps, so outcome-based approach and focusing only on a, on, a, on a single deviation for the seller, 
we have a theorem which, which can be interpreted as a, as a relaxed revelation principle, which tells the, the following. This is a, an intuitive result. So let's take any weak PV outcome XP of the game. For any such outcome, there exists a weak PV outcome that induces the, that outcome and satisfies the following properties. The bias truth telling constraint at time zero when reporting the type to the agent is satisfied, so the bias truth telling at time zero. The bias participation constraint in each period is satisfied, and also the seller obedience in each period with respect to the deviation which consists in ending the game with the price equal to theta L is satisfied. Therefore, these are necessary conditions for, for any equilibrium weak PV outcome, and this allows us to, to identify candidate weak PV, weak PV outcomes and therefore a superset of weak PV outcomes by solving a problem which is a much simpler relaxation of the original problem. And indeed, you can see how we can identify candidates for seller optimal outcomes by solving a problem which is actually a linear program which is uh, mm, relatively tractable. This is just in formulas, the previous theorem. And what we do, so since it's tractable, we solve it, and therefore by solving that problem, we, we find candidates, possible uh, mm, seller optimal equilibrium outcomes, and let's see how they look like. So first of all, trade dynamics. We have that there exists an endogenous deadline, capital T, which is finite for any parameter, and the game ends by that, that time. Type theta L, the low type, trades only in the, at the deadline with probability one, and price theta L, so there is full extraction of the low type. What about uh, the high type? The high type trades in all periods, except for, for the last period where only the, the low type trades. And this guy pays the, I, the theta H, the price equal to the I valuation in all periods except for the first period in which the, the, mm, the type gains an information rent because the price is uh, sm strictly smaller than theta H. And this endogenous deadline goes to infinity whenever players becomes infinitely patient. And that this candidate equilibrium, we have the failure of the host conjecture. That is to say that if this is indeed an equilibrium, even if, even if players become arbitrarily patient, the outcome is bounded away from first best efficiency, and the seller's payoff is bounded away from the low buyer's type. So let me say here that this is not another paper about the failure of the host conjecture. Papers on the failure of the host conjecture typically have shown, have shown that the host conjecture fails by basically modifying the basic game, such as introducing, I don't know, deadlines, outside option, and so on. Here we are not uh, changing the basic game at all. The basic game remi remains exactly the same as in the standard model. What we are doing is just playing with the information structure of the game. So let's assume that uh, this is indeed the candidate equilibrium outcome is indeed an equilibrium outcome, and it is so, uh, I, I just don't have time to explain why today, but let, let's give uh, some intuition. So what about, what is the optimal information structure? The optimal information structure for the seller is the one in which the buyers report the information about the buyer's private information arise without any grumbling but we delay, because how does the optimal information structure look like? The mediator stores the buyer type report, which is made at the beginning of the game, until the deadline T. But until the deadline, there is no information that is transmitted to, to the seller, except whether a trade has occurred or not. However, at the deadline, the information about, about the buyer type is revealed perfectly without any noise to the seller. So the price path, in contrast to the standard quotient outcome, is not declining over time, but it's actually mm, inverse U-shaped. There is a discount in the initial period, full surplus extraction at theta H in all periods until the deadline when the price drops to theta L, the low valuation. And as I was saying, 
the host conjecture fails, both in terms of uh, how the surplus is uh, split and in terms of efficiency. The trading outcome is uh, inefficient. Also, I want to highlight that although ex ante this may look a very complex problem, the optimal contract is very simple. So let me just give uh, some intuition for why this is the optimal information structure. So this is uh, also to show why uh, it is important that the, this information is stored and revealed with delay to the, to the seller, a possibility which was not considered by uh, earlier work. In particular, what we show is that the probability with which trade occurs in the first period with the evaluation by your type can be very, very large. And why is this so? Well, we know that at the deadline, no matter what the agent type is, the seller can fully extract the surplus because the immediate reports to the seller the buyer's valuation. Therefore, what happened to in the second to last period? The seller has no incentive to set a price which is smaller than theta H, even if his belief that the buyer has high valuation is below theta L over theta H. Not that whenever uh, the buyer, uh, uh, the, the seller's belief is below theta L over theta H, sequential rationality without uh, this possibility of information disclosure would always require the seller to post a price equal to theta L. However, because, the, because of the mediator and this delayed disclosure of the buyer type report, this doesn't need to be, to be so. And therefore, what happens? Once the seller becomes more aggressive today, in some period, it can also be more aggressive in the previous period. Because at each point in time, the buyer has less continuation payoff, conditional on no trade, and therefore the aggressiveness of each period seller are strategic complements to each other. So this is a bit the intuition of why this is the optimal information structure in, in the durable good monopoly setting. So I'm about to, to finish. So the rest of the paper is actually about the, our third step is about mediated implementation in which we show that this is indeed an equilibrium or an approximate equilibrium if the, if the prior is high and delta goes to one. But what we do also in the paper is to discuss unmediated implementation. Someone may, may be skeptical, skeptical about the, the presence of the mediator in the game. What we show is that we don't need a mediator to reach the seller optimal equilibrium outcome. It can be reached also without the, 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 mm, the presence of a mediator with, let's say, with uh, smart contracts. Thank you. We have time for some questions. So regard, regarding the last one, last note that you made, uh, how can you do it without a mediator? So is it like, how do you do the, how do you implement the information design? So basically, okay. So basically, what we show is that you can offer. If you allow the, the seller to, uh, to offer contracts, which, uh, and, and where a contract now is a long-term contract, which sp specifies an allocation for today, for tomorrow, and all future periods, given the input, and you don't have to, to, uh, to give any commitment power uh, to the seller, but not only you don't have to, to give any commitment power to the seller, there can be renegotiation tomorrow, but unilateral re renegotiation. The seller can say, okay, I display this long-term contract today. I change my mind, I can display a long-term contract tomorrow. But basically with this long-term contract, this is, a this is enough to replicate exactly the information structure that I was mentioning as to be the optimal one in this setting. So in a sense, there is some uh, recent work by Balash and, and Balash Zentes and co-author on these uh, smart contracts. They show the, the failure of the host conjecture. We characterize what is actually the optimal information structure in such games, and we show also that using that type of, of contract, we can reach the, 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 mark, the seller optimal equilibrium outcome that we, we do characterize. Let's thank the speaker one more time.